Hello, mini bar, mini bear. Sure, some color, huh? Red. That didn't work, huh? Can this? <laughs> I can do blue, I think. I'm not really a web guy. There, blue. And it's large. So can you hear me okay? You're the only one here to listen. Alright, so um, since you're the one here, you can watch, I guess, Let's see if that works. So I saw this cool effect in this game that I saw, not aerobatic, aerobat videos. So in this game, uh, this little plane like flies around, it's got a bunch of cool ribbons streaming off of it. 
Does that work? Cool. Uh, and I thought the uh, ribbon effect was pretty cool, so I thought, hey, I can make that. So I brainstormed a little bit, and then that's what I'm going to do tonight is make that effect. Probably not exactly that, but pretty similar to whatever that is coming out the back of that thing. So, let's uh, go, I guess. So we're going to need some Perlin noise, and I'm not going to do the Perlin noise myself. So, let's grab this. Move that up. That's probably all we need for that. Uh, so let's start with uh, getting some Perlin noise plotted on the screen, I guess. We can probably use this just to make my life a little easier. On load, knit, sure. And let's cash off our context and stuff. No, what is that? Canvas. Element by D canvas context equal canvas dot get context two D. Save that in JS Perlin dot JS. I wonder since we might have to debug some of this sometimes. Let's see if I can add that to the stream here. And init is not defined. Hey, look at that. Probably because I didn't save that. So instead of sharing those windows, can I just share that screen? What happens there? Right monitor. Uh, devastation, what do you mean? How do you select a class? Uh, a DOM element that has a class associated with it? Uh, there's a, I think it's get elements by class name because it can be a multi-select, and then you have to iterate through uh, to find the one that you're actually talking about. I believe I'm not a web guy. 
So I'm trying to share this other monitor so I don't have to manually turn off a uh, few of the, the debug tools. Uh, there, something like that. Devastation. Hello, a Mary can 15, 115. So, now this is all funky, huh? Okay, we'll put that there. Hide that one and that one. There. Cool. Okay. Now what's going on? Shouldn't be showing that. What happened? Sorry, I've never actually used this before. That's not showing just right monitor, is it? Is that? Huh. Weird. Oh, well, we don't really need that anyway. Okay, so. Uh, what was I doing? I was looking to see if that was working. So we pull up debug, and it's not fine. That's because we probably haven't saved this. No, it's not there. Uh, what's it complaining about? Oh, JavaScript. Yeah, that won't do. Yes. All right, that's a little better. Let's get something on screen. To verify that it works. Uh, fill rect. Fill style. Fill style. Hey. RGB. We're going to just do red. We might just be able to do red. Hey, okay, that is not 10 pixels. Uh, height, width, and window dot on resize I believe yeah it looks like 10 and that still looks like 10 cool all right so then let's uh let's just see if we can get our Perlin noise on screen in some fashion see what we're dealing with so let's do one one and the color is going to be based off of how about RGB equal function RGB B G something like that fill style equal zero and twenty eight two fifty six sure 
I can't see that. Did that not work? Oh, because I made it one. Huh. Uh. Hey, okay, that works. Cool. And let's do... What is it? Begin animation frame? Request animation frame? Well, my life, I'm the one typing it, right? Yes, Trentish, this is the Torchies shirt. You like it? What's that going to do? Hey, we got a bunch of pixels, large pixels, huh? Alright, so let's introduce some noise. And we probably gotta look at how to use that library I got. Uh, that makes sense. Noise dot. All right, so can't do noise. One, three, x, y. That's going to be pretty slow because that's pretty high res, I think. Let's see. And time. Yeah, we probably need something for time, huh? Perlin cycle equals zero. Cool. 
remove no remove package Get rid of that uh, so that's going to give us a value between negative one and one we want that in the space of well start zero to one scale equal function and value min max. Is there a math.scale in JavaScript? Or some sort? Maybe not. Let's see here. We want negative one to one to be zero to one. So we're going to pass in negative one should give us zero, which would be our min. I'm sure I'd know this if I hadn't been working all day. Let's just make it hard coded. Scale noise and return good grief val plus two minus one negative one plus two no calculator Negative one plus two is one minus one. One plus two minus one. Whoops, what happened? One plus two minus one, that's not right. Plus I'm confusing myself here. Negative one plus one is zero already. Oh, I'm confusing myself on this. I've been working too long today. This so one that's gonna be the same as plus one. Plus one, but with zero. over divide by two. Hey, is that what I want? Plus two divided by two. Negative one plus two. No. Negative one plus one divided by two. Hey, is that it? I think I got it now. So one plus one divided by two is one. Hey. Plus one. Divide by two. So then there's our noise value. So in case it's not clear why we're doing that, because I didn't actually mention other than I want it between zero and one. Negative one to one isn't going to be useful for me getting a color out of it. And if we're just going to plot these on screen as a color real quick, uh, correlating to the value of the Perlin noise. Uh, function at the location that we're trying to find. We would probably want that between 0 and 255. Speaking of which, let's put a 5 there. So uh, let's scale our noise. Scale noise at noise value and log noise value. Let's just see what that does. 0 0.5, a lot of them, because 
because why? So noise value zero, noise dot perlin three x. Uh. It looks black. Uh, times 255. And let's take that. Oh, hey, we're only running it once. That's why it's not changing. Oh, it's doing things. It did a thing. Oops, did that just break everything? It did, didn't it? It made things all weird. Oh, please. New tab, okay. Right, sorry about that. So let's pull that down. That might be way too many of those. Hey, good question. Worth spending. Uh, I don't know if anybody was here besides Mini Ba earlier, but uh, I saw this cool effect on this video. These little trails coming out behind this this ship here, and I won't be able to get them. Quite as cool as that, I don't think, but we're going to give it a shot and see what comes out. Plus, the whole video is pretty cool. It's like a pretty cool game. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for this, which isn't working yet. So, fill style. Is there anything else I have to do to make those not fill all at the same time? Is that what that's doing? Canvas fill rect. Sure. And JavaScript is not something that I spend all my time in, so that's why it's good for me to play in it, because it keeps me on my toes, so to speak, I guess. value at there. I have a suspicion that that's not doing exactly what I want it to do. Sure, sure. Hi. We can 
spit those out. Okay, so those look like their numbers between negative one and one. So if we clamp or scale that. Hey, what do we need to try? Ugh. No. Permanent cycle zero zero point one. Noise value. This thing did work, right? Uh, call it. I don't know what yellow is. Red. I can do red. Does that look red? I think so. Oh, wait. That was the wrong spot for that, huh? Hey, there it is. Cool. So let's slow that down a little bit by proceeding through time a little bit slower. So if we zoom out of that, then it's not going to look as good. Uh, so when we when we scale that down by one tenth, we're actually going to zoom in to one tenth of that noise, like right in, I don't know, right in here, whatever one tenth would be. Uh, so it just looks kind of bad right now. But if we, oops, do that, and then if we go in maybe a little bit more, 0.05, what does that give us? Kind of like a plasma effect. Let's see what the simplex looks like. That actually looks like it's cycling a little faster. Ooh. So I believe simplex is supposed to be pretty similar results to Perlin noise, except more performant. It's not going to be as hard to hard for your system to create, but I'm not sure that I like that better. Perlin 3. Cycle faster. Too fast. Ooh, that's cool. At any rate, we don't necessarily need all of that. We just wanted to see that the Perlin noise was giving us something that we could look at, and I think it is. So that's pretty cool. So then uh, we'll need to create probably. We want ribbons flying off. We're gonna have to try to. Plot that. So let's just start with. Plotting one square. And actually, we could save us probably save a little bit of computation by caching all of these rectangle values first. Let's do. Hmm. 
And then we've got a nice handy resize here. can't type very well because my fingers are a little cold down here. <laughs> Naming things. Hey, those are all perfectly cromulent names. So what we're going to want to do is whoops, something pretty similar to that. Excuse me. Except at zero. Zero. And then get image data. Get image data. There's one. Zero zero. Pixels dot push pixel. So there we've cached off, we've pre computed all of these different gradient levels of each of these pixels. Uh, and so then when we go up here to draw them, we could just uh, context dot put image data and put in the proper one at the corresponding. Uh, uh, excuse me, array index for the color that we're looking for or for the gradient value that we're looking for. So fill, excuse me, we don't have a fill canvas yet, but we will. Let's fill it with our, do we have a background color? We could. RGB at, uh, the blue works okay, I guess. How about half blue or partially blue? It's probably not going to like that. Let's. Lots of things I didn't like apparently. Noise value is not defined. But yeah, that makes sense. We don't actually want noise value. We want. I. 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 Captain. Is that better? We've got something for it. Guide fill canvas is not defined. Yeah, I haven't written that yet, huh? With a color. Start fill. Start fill style. Color. Fit canvas dot height. Now what? String is not a function. Oh, you're right. Ctx dot fill style color color. String is not a function. Oh, equal, probably. All right. We can probably get rid of that output as well. And then here, whoa. Equal pixels at noise value. And so if this works, it should not look no different from that. Yes, 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 except we want this to be put 
image data. PID put image data x y x dot wait what x dot y ah image data got it so pixel what happened see no different told you it would work just fine unexpected token. Sure. Oh, that looks like it's actually a lot slower. Hmm, that is a lot slower. This isn't moving well. Hmm, that's bizarre. I wasn't expecting that. At any rate, I think I may have gotten sidetracked anyways. It goes pretty fast. Can we make it even bigger? I got no. Call it two and one hundred. Nice. Okay, that's real slow. Looks fairly reasonable. Again, not what we're going for, though, so. That's still pretty cool. All right, so that was cool. Let's pull that out of here and maybe call that Perlin plot. Okay, and let's start in on Perlin Ribbon. Hello, American. Uh, this. No, not that. This. But not this. I'm making that. 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 Anyway, uh, the ribbon's coming off of that thing I thought looked pretty cool, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, making some facsimile of it. And so I'm going to be leveraging the noise at, say, that pixel right there, which is going to be cycling in and out uh, between 0 and 1, and that's going to act as a modulation for the position of our ribbon. We could just do it with a sine and cosine, but that'd look a little uniform. So let's start in on that with... Hey John Brown, good to see you. 
uh, or see your name in pink. Uh, sidetracked. Okay, so now what I want to do is we don't need an X and a Y here. We just need one point inside of our image, and it doesn't particularly matter right now where that is. Uh, when we get more than one on screen, which we have to get one on screen first, but we may care about what those are or what the resolution is, because we don't want we don't want to make it too big because it will probably end up slowing it down if we go too high res on the noise. Yeah. Um. So we'll get our noise value. For this we will use one of those pixels that we got just so we can make sure that it's doing what we expect it to. So let's grab our pixel at noise value. And then let's use another piece of noise. So we'll call this uh, pixel index. And we'll call this one position. Whoops. Position. And move that one somewhere else. Five. And we don't particularly care about that. But we do want to well, actually, we don't care about scaling it with that scale function we wrote earlier either, because this is negative one to one, so that's going to give us an oscillation around a center point. So we'll just scale it up by some number of pixels, 200. And then we will use our snippet to put pixel at equal height width and we'll put x at divided by 2 and y at divided by 2 plus our oscillation and what does that do? nicely broken Perlin ribbon is not defined. We can fix that. I don't see anything. X is not defined. Uh, yes, we did not define an X. We defined a W and an H. Hey, he's there. He's not moving much. Height divided by two plus position. Uh, ribbon. Height is eight fifteen. Position is oh yeah hey, let's actually assign that value. Whoa, let's fill canvas. After, so we'll write this here and we'll move it up with our background color. Do that first. That way, the time between frames is not spent looking at nothing and spent looking at the result of the last frame. Hey, there it is. Okay, so we can get a super basic version of this done by shifting the whole screen left, but that's not going to work real well for connecting them but it's a good first pass so let's do shift canvas function hey look at that I don't want to draft this stuff and let's call it a direction this is going to be direction on the X and image equal image data is zero zero height and then PID cool I like these snippets I added image and we want directs 
Yeah, that'd probably work. We'll see. Zero. Shift, shift, shift. Let's call it a uh, negative five. This is not going to be playing nicely with our frame rate. And let's. Do that. Hey, there it goes. It's kind of cool. Um, not exactly what I was shooting for, but it's baby steps to the bus, right? That's kind of cool, anyway. Um, we're gonna want to throw down a quick. Well, we don't have to. It'll make our life a little easier. We're gonna make a new vector class and in here we're gonna have as I keep saying I'm not a JavaScript guy typically so I have to remember how to write classes every time um, this is just function vector and let's give it an x and a y this dot x equal x, this dot y equal y prototype vector this will be scalar I'll call that a multiply and these will be pure functions so they are going to return new vector of this dot x times scalar, this dot y times scalar. So there's our uh, vector scalar multiplication, so scaling a vector. Prototype vector. It would be nice if these uh, snippets had the method name as a fillable field as well, so you can just tab over to it. Oh hey, look at that, you can just tab over to it. It just wasn't highlighted. Hey. Love it when a plan comes together. How was I going to write? Uh, how about a length? Length squared. And how about a normal length, which will return this dot length squared. At the square root of that. And this is going to be return this dot x times this dot x plus this dot y times this dot y. Alright, so the squared is if you, I don't know that we'll actually need it. We're only going to have a few on screen, but typically you would do a, a length squared so you don't have to pay for the cost of the math square root if you don't actually care what the real value of the length is. If you're just going to compare and see, you know, is this one further away than that one? Is this one more, the magnitude of this one larger than that one? You don't care what the actual value is. So you don't have to pay for the heavy square root operation. And what else would we want? Uh, an add. An add might be nice. So, add. other dot x dot y uh, that might do for now so if we go here and just make one more of those with vector hey let's call it vector just to be proper here all right and let's make a ribbon as well. JavaScript and function. So if any of you guys are, I don't know how many people we have here now. Several, I guess. More than I can see on my screen, perhaps. Uh, at any rate, if any of you are uh, JavaScript aficionados, um, 
you can tell me how I'm actually supposed to make a class. I know that there's like a million ways to make the same function, but if there's a better way than how I'm doing it, I'll listen. And for this guy, let's take... He's going to want to start somewhere, and he's going to want a color, perhaps. So, color. And this dot x equal x, this dot y equal y. I should get some gloves, my fingers are cold. Color. And save it as ribbon.js. No, not bar. Prototype. Ribbon. Gonna have an update function on a ribbon, and it's gonna take a delta time. And we'll probably let the ribbons handle drawing themselves as well. And a draw. And it'll probably want a context. And it might care about the width and the height. And if we were doing this properly, we'd abstract it out so we're not dealing in pixels all the time. However, we're not doing it properly. We're doing it fast, quickly, swiftly. Um, and I'm not going to shut down in three minutes. I'm going to go until I'm ready to go to bed. Uh, probably, so you don't have to bail or expect me to resume because what I get done today may not get finished later. What I don't get done today may not be getting gotten back at any rate. So we don't have an update yet because we don't actually know what we're doing here. We're also going to want all of the points that we've collected so far because we're actually going to take each one of these points that this is spitting out and hey Canadian 1010 I'll get to you in a second um, it's actually hopefully pretty cool but we'll see uh, so we're gonna take each one of these points that this is spitting out right now and we're gonna stuff it into our points uh, list per ribbon and then we won't plot the points anymore we'll actually draw a line between them uh, and then it'll look a little closer to Canadian 1010 to answer your question this Those ribbons, I'm calling them ribbons, trails coming out from behind that speedy ship, I think are pretty cool looking. So I was hoping to duplicate them in some fashion. And then maybe buy that game at some point because it looks pretty cool. So we've got a bunch of points. And we're going to want to, if we don't have enough points, we don't care. So... less than two return is there a snippet for four loops? Hey look at that there is four I minus one why is it reverse? That's weird, it's going through it backwards. That'll work though. I uh, know well, this is just straight JavaScript uh, yeah, just straight JavaScript running in Chrome. For what's that one do? Yes, so things is going to be this dot points and yeah, mini I was talking to the guy that uh uh is making the game. He does a live coding stream of his game uh, sometimes on a, I don't know, some hangout, some game dev live stream coding hangouts thing. And uh, he was saying that it got greenlit like in six days. He got a bunch of interest after it went. He went to some conference or expo or something in DC. A bunch of people were interested and then he put up the trailer and I guess it got picked up by a bunch of sites. So. He got greenlit pretty fast. He was pretty excited for it. And he says it's mostly done. He's just adding some flash to it now because I guess after playing it for three hours or something, then it starts to become repetitive. So he's trying to fix that a bit. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got our point. And we want um, the speed that these guys are going to go that way. Uh, so let's just set that to something. We're using DT. We got a delta time, so we can actually do this in pixels per second. 
let's start somewhere high 200 and points actually we want this to be a vector we'll use our new vector equal new vector zero so we're not going to scale it in the y direction or uh, move it in the y direction because the y is going to stay persistent as it moves to the left we're just going to shift these points to the left as we go so point dot point equal point dot mall no add this dot speed dot multiply with our scalar which is delta time okay that should get everything iterated but we want to have another function prototype ribbon add point and this guy should probably take an x and a y and that's about it and vector x y Ugh. and push it onto our push point and while we're touching every one of these points let's invalidate them so we don't just fill up with points so if point dot x is less than zero this dot points technically we should always have the firstmost, the leftmost, the topmost in our array, if any are outside of them, it will be starting from the left and moving over until we're back in the screen. But just to be safe, let's just splice out of here, in which case we're going to have to revisit our for loop and go in reverse since we are going to be removing at any point. Is there a split? No. So splice is going to take the index, or how many to remove in the index? Is that it? Splice. Where to start? How many to remove? Where to start? How many to remove? So let's use that fancy snippet that they gave us. Things at length minus one, things is this dot points. Alright, so uh, the reason that we're iterating through it in reverse is if we started at zero, went to one, and then saw that we needed to remove one, that would remove one and shift everything left, which would mean two would move into one slot and be index one, and then we would jump to the next one, which means that we would skip some of them. So if we go from the back of the list over, we've already visited it before we've shifted left, and then we move left once, if that's making any sense, so that we don't screw with uh, our collection um, not visiting any stuff, any of the entries in it. We want to touch everything once, but we still only want to go through it once. So we're trying to do them all at the same time. So yes, 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 yes. Remove it if then continue continue and then update the point and I think that this is not going to be by reference for some reason I have an intuition so points at I equal point let's put it back in there uh, I don't have an educational background I barely graduated high school uh, 15 years ago really yeah, 15 years ago. Point dot add this dot points I equal point. Sure, we've removed them if they're outside of bounds. Draw is going to be context dot. Here we go. We can do that again. 
and that carries over as well. However, this isn't what we want. Thanks, Canadian. I think I've done fairly well for myself so far. Uh, start at zero. I lessen this dot point stop length. Can we make our life any easier on there? So we don't have to look that up multiple times. This dot point num points equals zero. Alright. Then in our update, let's get that once. This dot num this dot and there's a bug right there on line 19 this dot points dot length because points is not going to good grief exist uh, so we want that should have been that however it's going to be num point uh, what happened num points uh, okay, 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 okay. So we should have an update and we should have a draw. Num points should not change. Yes, it does. Thank you. Num this dot num points minus minus. We gotta decrement that down once because we've removed an entry from our array here. Alright, so this guy needs to be num points minus one and uh yes step up once and then we want so we want num points minus one because we're actually gonna we would step outside of the bounds of the array because we are going to get the next one here because we can't draw a line t if we don't have two of them to draw lines between or two of them to draw a line between and No, this is where my memory fails me. We've got a stroke style, stroke style, equal color. We've already got color, Oops, except that's an instance of it. We've got color, stroke style, dot move to point dot x point dot y dot line to point dot point two point two dot y that's not gonna be what I want right we want to begin begin path there we go Probably put that out there. Do we have to move to each time? I don't think so. If i is equal to zero, do that. Is that what I want? Otherwise, do that. Now we'll see what it looks like. That may be wrong. Close CLP. Close path. Am I missing something here? Stroke style line to line width two. And this for all points, sure. Now we've written a ton of code and we haven't tested any of it, which always goes quite well. Let's put in a ribbon here as well. After vector. Mm. 
because it's dependent. I don't know if that matters, but. All right, so we've got a Perlin ribbon. We're gonna not shift our canvas anymore. We don't need that. Mm, we will need this back though. And that should go back to a line going up and down. Okay. Let's get some ribbons. And num ribbons equal. Let's call it one for now. While There's a pretty cool uh, get random color thing I found a while ago for JavaScript. Uh, random color. Because if you try to do your own random color, you're going to end up with a lot of colors that aren't nice. Lots of super white and super dark blacks. You want something that kind of stays in the space of nice colors. And I believe that this is the one that I used before that does that. And it might not be. At any rate, there's one out there that does that I've used before. I get color equal function. Turn. And there's ribbon. Here's ribbon. Color. Ribbon. Let's pull that out. H W. H I don't think I can do that, can I? In JavaScript, can I retune or turn two variables with one function? I'd probably have to wrap them, huh? Resize. Return new. WH W equal. Oh, somebody tell me if you know what I'm doing here. Uh, H equal H, something like that, maybe. I don't know how that works in JavaScript. Object, sure. Eh. The debugger will tell me what I did. No. Go like that. Now, how do I make that save? I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure I'm also overcomplicating this. No, nope. doesn't like that one either. How about new? Varret. Varret dot w equal w. Uh, 
object is not a function. There. W is not defined. Yes, that's good though. Alright, so dims equal which equal dims dot h dims dot w hello bam bam bigelow new w w uh, okay I, I didn't do comma I tried semicolon in there and it didn't like me but it I think it failed at the the single quote first but this should work here at any rate I'm only using it right here we can actually we could have just pulling it out to a global variable here uh, okay no errors there so we've got a ribbon now we probably want to update our ribbons Perlin ribbon yes All right, that's all going to go away. Let's just pull that into Perlin ribbons function. And let's give these guys a context. They don't technically need it. Width and a height. WH. And then plot WH, WH. This is why it's nice to pull those out and just throw them up. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't ship anything like this with these. So every one of these uh, variables is now on the window object. Uh, and if you already had something that was using, say, the name ribbons, then you've just stomped it or it comes in and stomps you afterwards. Uh, and uh, you should actually probably put these into their own object here but because I'm just messing around I didn't take the time to do that so where was I and Perlin ribbons WH I equal zero num ribbons ribbons at I. All right, so we've got a ribbon. We need a delta time. We haven't been tracking time at all yet. So last update equals zero var. Don't need. Tick var now equal date. What is it? Date time dot now. No JavaScript. Date dot now. Time. And so if our last update is equal to zero, that means that we've never set it. And so that we don't get a giant spike from the beginning of time till now in our simulation, we're just going to catch that very first time and set it to now. The side effect of this is going to be that the very first frame, no time has elapsed. However, it's going to be better than the alternative where we have a giant line that's runs across the screen because it thinks that whatever 70 years have elapsed, has elapsed since the last time it ran equal now minus last update alright so we've got a DT and let's give each one of these guys a DT DT for delta time DT and driven dot update with dt and is that all we took? I don't even know if we took that. Was it capitalized? I don't remember. Driven 
draw no capital DT cool and uh, let's run through it one more time and draw them afterwards draw update and draw takes a context a width and a height Ugh, I gotta get those again no I have them yes cool so we haven't added any points yet so let's add a new point with our noise value which we have somewhere here All right. Math it's not critical. Actually, that's not the one we want. Position. That's the one we want. Let's try that guy. All right. So we got position at some point in here. And ribbon dot add. What does add take? Can I like somehow view layout two rows and put ribbon down here? Hey, cool. So add point is what it was. And it wants an X, which is going to be width divided by 2. And it wants a Y, which is going to be H divided by 2 plus position. Let's see what that does. Num points is not defined. Num points. Ah, see, we got bit by that earlier. Well, we almost got bit by that earlier. Num points this dot this dot point dot and yeah yeah this dot okay no errors no visuals No, okay, so we have a ribbon. The ribbon has 679 points on it. The X values are large. Are we going in the wrong direction? They are all greater than zero, which won't hit our check to get rid of them. Ribbon, let's go negative 200. And break here. Ribbons points negative. Huh, oh, something's wrong there. Maybe. So let's just step through this the very first time through. Uh, how about there? So this, yeah, it's a yuck. Not this, num ribbons one. Add point update. Num points is just one. Okay, so that doesn't hit yet. Okay, that hit. We now have two points. And we get our point. Point is here. X, yeah. Okay. And 689 should drop to 680. Oh, DT. That's why. That is a huge number because that is in milliseconds. So let's scale that to be seconds. DT is going to be divided by 1000. OK, 
Okay, now what do we have? Here. All right, first time through that we have more than two points, or more than one point. So point is 689 and 435. DT is 0.043. That's not quite 30 hertz. And speed is a vector. And point, we're already good. So point is 680.4. What was it before? I forgot already. Point to 689. Point to 680.4. Uh, they're both moving together. Well, that's okay for those ones. Once they get outside of the screen, they'll be fine. That's a little bit of a bug. So let's continue. 45 seconds for DT. Let's fix that. And point is at 689. That's the first one. So it just got placed. Should be somewhere in the middle of the screen. The next one is at 80, negative 8393. Or it just set that because my DT didn't take, I guess. Nice. Bummer. 8401. So those should get taken out. Alright, so what's wrong with our draw? Uh, okay. DT, let's get DT to a smaller number. Wait a second. Why is that a hundred? DT. Now, when is last update? Sure is. Yeah, it's like 124. And how many points do we have in ribbon? Ribbons. Hang on, that's wrong. Why is. Oh, I guess it just. Since it only has one, it shows me that. Is that right? Ribbons up, push. Yeah, array with just one in there. Okay, points. I feel like I should have done this in the morning instead of in the evening after I've been working all day. DT. Step. 178. Refresh. 2. Uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm doing this way too late, I guess. Uh, the problem here is that uh, last update is never updating so the reason that was 124 seconds is because it was valid it was a hundred and twenty four seconds since I started it so now we want last update to equal now uh, we still want to do that first so that our first one is not giant but now after after we pull out our DT we're gonna update our last update so now it's gonna be uh, should be pretty close to I think it's 30 Hertz each time that request animation frame I think tries to get 30 hertz but I could be wrong alright so we still don't have anything on screen but let's check out what our DT is doing 0.12 that's much better if I had just done this I would have seen it slowly incrementing over time and it should have been a dead giveaway alright so we're here and we want to do our update Alright, so point is at 689, point is at 678. 689, 678, negative 1091, because DT is fairly large. F8, F10. Okay, that looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be, approximately. 
Hey, me too. I am building... I should put that like in... somewhere. I'm building... Uh, the ribbon's coming off of this flying super speed arcade shooter ship. Um, we're pretty close. As soon as this ribbon starts drawing, then it's fairly trivial to add lots of other ribbons. Just need this one drawing. My next starter. You guys are weighing heavy on my head. Alright. Bam, how many points do we have? Points. 208. Well, that's good. That means that they are probably spread across this screen right here. We just can't see any of them, and that's probably due to this drawing here. So let's, uh,. Let's fill rect ribbon draw. Let's just do this real quick and see what comes out of it. Point dot y drawing with JavaScript on an HTML5 canvas correct and. 5, 5, ctx dot fill style. Let's not put this in. Yeah, this is fine. So fill style equal red, trusty red. Okay. So our line drawing isn't working. We're pretty close here. They're moving as you can see. So we need to actually. I thought we were filling that canvas to clear it. Oh, uh, we were doing that before we went to Perlin ribbons, probably. Uh, this thing's not working how I want it to. Perlin ribbons, fill canvas. And again, you do this before you draw, not after you draw. If you had, so we'll just show you. That's a result close to what we want. We want those to be with lines. However, um, the reason it was leaving the trails is because we weren't clearing our screen space. If we were to put this after we draw, then what's going to happen is we're going to go through and say, hey, update, draw, clear, wait uh, 1 one-thirtieth of, one of a second with a blank screen, come back, draw real fast, clear again right away, etc. So we do it up here. You could, we could try to do some trickiness with, ah, how do I do that? Background color, no. Nope. Uh, we could try to do some trickiness with, let's make an RGBA and say 0 0.2 and try to fade these out over time. But you tend to not be pleased with the results of doing it globally to the canvas because RGB is on top. Floating point errors jump in there and you'll never actually approach, well, you'll approach, you will never actually reach the color that you're trying to get to. And you'll leave a history of your last drawn on screen and that's not what you want and we'll see if we can actually see that now what happened and it does not define the expected string ah yes oof that's totally what we wanted right 0.2. Hang on, am I screwing this up? No. Am I? RGBA JavaScript. Does that take floating points? I've done it before. What's all this? 0, 0. Yeah. So the opacity is 0 to 1. So why did that go red? Red. Red, red, red. Sure. So that's not an example of what I was trying to demonstrate, but that is totally wrong. Hey, hey. Haha. -ha. There we go. Hey, cool. That looks like it's somewhat fading. Now let's, if we do... That's actually kind of neat. 
uh, zero. Try again. Zero. Can't tell if that's actually leaving the trail that I was talking about. No, it's going to be hard to demonstrate on this one because it keeps trying to overwrite. I think that was it right here, though. It's not actually going black. This should have been black by now, but you can't actually fade to black with using a low alpha value and keep applying it over top because, uh, uh, like I said, the floating point error that kicks in, there's a whole document on it somewhere, and it's too late for me to remember it off the top of my head. Uh, you can approximate it by finding what color that is and actually fading to that color, but that's on a one by one basis because only it, that would only work in the, the view that you're trying to do. A better way to do that would be to have your ribbon components actually fade themselves out over time. But that's not what we're here to do, so we can just get rid of that. And get rid of that and put this back to how it was. All right, so we're going like that. So our line drawing is wrong. Line drawing. <laughs> line drawing. Anyway. So begin a path. Stroke style, line width, two. Line two, point two, close path. Ah, do we need to do like Stroke. Hey, ho, oh, there's something. Something. <laughs> that's totally not what we wanted, but that's actually kind of fun. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, we need to perhaps leave this move two in. So move two, and then line two. Do we have to move two each time? This looks like a new screensaver. I think I have that screensaver. I think it's called ribbons. Huh. Saver. I don't know if you can actually see this. It's even going to pop up. Oh, it's called Mystify, I think. No, that's a different one. Ribbons. No? What was that one called? Anyway, yeah, it looks like a screensaver. Or an old screensaver. Does that go away? Okay, so the problem is, is that we're always drawing to the very first point, or the last point in the list, I think. If this is the first one, which is not valid. This one's the first one. So we did a move to, and then we did a line to every time after that. So it sounds like this feels wrong. Okay, but it looks right. That's kind of weird. I wasn't expecting that to be that way. Okay, so we've got a ribbon. We've got it. It's not exactly what we wanted from the video because they come out of the ship. Come on. Ah. Jeez, too much action. And we're not going to be able to duplicate it exactly, but they're kind of coming out of the ship where ours are moving up and down right here. Uh, but that would take a lot more logic in our ribbon system, our ribbon class, that I'm probably not going to write. But what we can do is make more ribbons. Let's call it five ribbons. Hey, that didn't work. Num ribbons. Ribbons. Num ribbons.
number of images five. Ribbon, new ribbon, ribbon, stop, push ribbon. Try and bah. Problem is, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm just faking it here. Ribbons. There are two ribbons there. Draw the other ones. So, run that for a bit. Let's... Whoa. So we've got the one ribbon updating, ribbon equal ribbons at I. Trentish asks if they are getting the same noise values. Yes, that is probably the case. We should probably cache off their seed, which is going to be actually that, not that. Yeah, very good point, Trentish. Uh, me too, same thing, yes. I believe that is our problem. And that might be why it's looking a little funky as it's going here, too. I don't know if it's funky on your screen. So let's go to ribbon and color and seed. This dot. Or tjos. That's also an acceptable spelling of this. Seed. We could just move the point generation inside here on its update, but where's the fun in that? Bar seed equal ribbon dot get seed. How funky is your? I don't like that. You got a smile out of me. Uh, ribbons at point. Ribbon prototype. I like this guy. Ribbon tab. Get seed tab. Look at that. Tab. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, return this dot seed. And now seed, 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 seed here is actually going to be used there. There. What's that do? Not a damn thing. Sorry. Kids might watch this. Seed. Ah, oh, we don't pass seed in when we instantiate the ribbon. Let's fix that. Ribbon. And we'll call seed. Um. Math. Uh, is that between zero and one? Somebody answer that for me? Sure. Hey, look at that. All right, so they're pretty close to each other in our space, it looks like. So what if we give it a seed X and a seed Y to move them a little bit further away? Seed Y. And... Mm, Seeds. Hey, there's a good point. Seed is still going to be seed. Yes, seed there. Yeah, sure. And then over here, seed x bar seed equal new vector seed x seed y. And we'll pass in seed. Get seed. See, that vector came in pretty useful, and it was a pretty, whoa, why? Pretty simple class to write, too. What does that do? Nothing. Undefined is not a function. Get seed. What do they call it? Get seeds. Hey, that's different and cool. I don't like that blue background, or whatever color it is black oh <laughs> so that's pretty cool let's uh, uh, get some more variation out of it and if we were real no we're not seed pro and cycle increment 
one. What's that do? Wagga wagga. It's actually going a lot slower than I would have expected. I mean, it, it's not going slow. It just seems like it's hitching pretty good. Let's put that at the right side of the screen, though. That might be cool. Uh, zero five. What was it before? It was zero five. Zero seven five. Times two fifty five. Uh, ribbon. Wide deviation. Equal four hundred. They still stay like there's definitely in close proximity to each other in that space, it would appear. So what if we scale this uh up by a bit. That starts to look noisy, doesn't it? And what might be cool is if we change the width based on the y delta. That is, how fast is it moving up and down at any given point in time? Also, I wonder if it'll look less hitchy if I slow that down. Yeah, less hitchy, not as cool. And it still seems to slow down quite a bit there. I wonder if that's because I'm frame capturing and whatnot as well. No, Chrome is killing it. So, thoughts so far? Anything I should touch before I call it quits here? Profile a JavaScript routine and see what's taking all our time. I must be doing something stupid because we're not doing that much. Although it might be all those calls into Perlin. It's not that many, it's five every frame, or num ribbons every frame. Is anybody even still here? Yeah, there's people here. Slamming salmons. Uh, Go away, you. Speed. Let's put that even higher. What's that do? Hey, it goes faster. We could go off in weird directions, too. But it's going to look a little funky, I think. How about the other direction, so it's not behind my window? Oh, yeah, I was going to put it on the left side of the screen, huh? W. Oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to. Berlin, oh, because we're adding the points there. Add point W. Ticket, 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 ticket. Let's get pretty slow. Let's resize it down here. And it could just be because we're trying to update the whole screen, but I don't think so. I mean, it just seems like it's running a lot worse than it should. Did that fix it? Yeah, curve two is not going to help too much because our line's pretty dense. I and mean, we're getting the curve out of the purlin. Uh if we sparsely populated our our line, so if it was you can't see my finger, so if it was dot 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 dot, you know, and then we did a curve too, that would give us pretty similar appearance, I think. We can actually make this perform a little bit better by so resize function. Let's just make it still be full screen. And for people that didn't see that earlier, it's full screen because we have a CSS file saying fill the whole thing and set it to zero zero. 
Um, and then the canvas actually initializes, I think, with like 15300 for its resolution. So it was full screen, but at 150, um, I guess you would call it texels across or up and down at 300 across. So what we'll actually do is we will uh, downsample essentially our image here. And so it's still filling the screen. We're still drawing to every pixel on the screen, except now each pixel is actually a 2x2 two two pixel in screen space, except they're not going to be exactly, if we could pause that. And I'm talking stuff that actually many of you may not care about. Uh, so if we pause it, uh, each one of these is going to be uh, two by two. Actually, we set a line width of two, and if that's in pixels, then they're probably four by four. But if we're assuming that this is only one pixel wide in the the native resolution, then we just downsampled it two uh, x, so it's now two by two for those. Except it's not. Um, I don't believe it's doing uh, a direct correlation of a two by two pixel space is pixel zero. I think what it's actually going to do is sample it across this, so we'll end up with little blurry lines in here. So those are going to be, it's, we actually just got a little bit anti-aliasing out of doing this, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for the performance win, which seems like it's a bit better, but I still suspect something is going on, and I would actually blame my processor first because it tried to let out some smoke a few weeks ago. And this could get even better if we moved all the drawing to the GPU. If we, say, use 3.js to do it, um, draw it in WebGL, uh, that's a topic for probably another day. I'm not going to do that right now, or maybe never. Uh, let's set that back to zero. So we kind of got what we wanted out of it. It's too fast, I think. It's still a little hitchy. It's not at 30 frames a second, or even... Can we actually change... And I don't think it's going to matter, because we're CPU bound right now. Request animation frame at a certain speed. Yeah, I'm not going to do that work right now. I've done that before for actually... This is John Brown's... He's got a, a cool project called Uncontext, and I had done some frame rate handling instead of using request animation frame to try to get more speed out of some of the stuff I was doing to make them render a little smoother. Uh, at any rate, make that bigger. Hey, the resize worked. That was cool. That was cool. Forgot that we did that. So I think we can try one last thing before I call it quits for the night. And if we go into ribbon and we do var uh, y delta equal point two dot y minus point dot y. So that's going to tell us the distance of movement in y and if we try to scale that I don't really know what that range is going to be we'll just throw some numbers at it here so if y, we'll give it a threshold first and we'll call that threshold 20 pixels. If y is greater than 20, then let's apply, let's see, so the most it could move in one frame, if this was truly random data, is 400 pixels, because we, is that right? Did I do 400 on that? 
Let's see that. Yeah, 400 might be actually pretty big. At any rate, that's going to be 800 pixels because when we use this, we are multiplying it by our. Um, oh shoot, that's wrong. <laughs> that wasn't even doing anything. Let's put that back at 255 Berlin ribbons. Position times 200. That's where I wanted that deviation. Ribbon Y deviation. Okay, there's our 200 by. Two, or there's our 400 up and our 400 down because ribbon Y deviation. So this value right here, position that comes out of this Perlin 3 function call is. Um, in the range of negative one to one. Hey, I've been looking at you guys about talking, huh? So it's in the range of negative one to one, and we multiply that by 400, which gives us a range of negative 400 to positive 400, which is actually 800 pixels. Uh, so the theoretical maximum of uh, uh, truly random noise, which Perlin noise is not, would be uh, a y deviation of one at 800, or one at negative 400 off of our, our zero, and then the other at 400, which would be 800 pixels. So that could give us an upper bound. We are not truly random. We can never jump from one extreme to the other in Perlin noise because that's what's generating these nice lines for us. Uh, the next iteration at any given coordinate in your Perlin noise is going to be. Um, next to uh, the a smooth transition from it's an interpolation basically from your previous position or your previous value at that coordinate and we saw that when we were plotting the Perlin noise directly whoops let's turn those back on that's gonna be bad so when we're plotting this you're actually seeing if you just watch one pixel it's going from black to white and all of the grays in between uh, but none of them are going from black to white. It's going from black to not quite black to a little bit less black, closer to white. And that's uh, the interpolation that I was talking about. So when we're drawing these, when we're plotting the position of our lines going, actually, let's do this. Uh, how's that work? Hey, look at that. Oof. Backwards. And no good because we're filling in here, so let's fill right here. Okay, cool. A lot slower. <laughs> A lot slower. So, uh, say this pixel right here, and that's, let's call that the position for the one ribbon that we have on screen. Alright, so as this pixel changes from black to white, uh, that's controlling the position of the y position of the point that we're adding. It's giving us a negative one to one. We're multiplying that by 400, and then we're adding that to uh, y divided by or height divided by two. So it's either going to be between here and here. Uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh right. So the the maximum movement that we can get out of it is an interpolated value. We're never going to jump from here all the way to the top because it's never going to jump from black to white or from negative one to one in one frame. Uh, well, given our increment, our this value right here, we're saying cycle through these slowly. If we cycle through it in larger steps, then sure it's possible to do that. I believe we can see three. Yeah, there we can actually jump, but we're not doing that. We're going in small steps, and so we won't jump. Let's turn off Perlin plot. Let's pull that back down from 400 to 200. And what did I do? There it is. Okay. And let's put some more on screen. 
Now let's go back to just one of them while we write this part. All right, so our maximum deviation then is 400 pixels. It's never going to be that. I don't know what it's going to be. I mean, even that, pretty steep, that's still just going to be a few pixels. So 20 might even be too much. Let's not clamp it at all. So start at 2 because that's what we're at for our baseline var width equal 2 and width time, times equal golly. Uh, y delta Let's do y delta equal math dot min y delta. This is kind of a hack, but I'm at that point tonight. So width, and that wants to be wrapped in a uh, it's not gonna do what we want. Plus two. Er, sorry, width. Yeah, I'm getting tired. What does that do? Well, we have some thin lines there, <laughs> except then when they get over, they get a lot thicker. But I don't know if you can see that, but we are actually getting. something out of it. Six twenty. Oh, you know what I bet it's doing? I bet it's applying that to all of them, which we don't want. So we'd have to close the stroke after every line. Hmm. Is that right? Does that make sense to anybody? Also, why was that inside the loop? <laughs> Oh, that broke everything. Maybe that's why it was inside there. Begin path, close path, stroke. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> Joke's on you, I haven't known what I'm doing all night. At any rate, let's uh, pull that back down to get rid of this stuff. Didn't do what we wanted to. Keepers, go like that. Alright, I'll get some more ribbons on screen and start tying it up. Did anybody have any questions? It's been two hours. Uh, anybody have any questions for me before I hang it up? That's a lot of ribbons. I did not mean to do 154. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. Ribbon. and speed this should actually make it a little bit more performant because we have less points on screen at any given time because we're cutting them out faster by moving to the left faster that means they're getting to the left edge and being removed from our array faster. I wonder if this is actually hurting us here too. Uh, we technically know that we're at the front and I mentioned that earlier. Is this better? So actually it's going to be 
This may not be faster because we're going to have to do a lot of work here. This dot points dot. Is there a reverse? Whoops. What happened? Yeah. I would have figured one of you guys know more about JavaScript than me. Nobody answers my questions, though. I am the one with the headset. Uh, this dot points equal this dot points dot reverse dot. Actually, I could probably just do that dot pop. No, we don't want that. This dot points dot pop. This dot points dot. I'm assuming that reverse does not operate in place. It just mirrors that faster. Might just be me. Hey, that works too, Mini Ba. I think that is faster. Is that right? So if we make this go even slower, that means we'll get more of them on screen. So by the time this gets all the way to the left side, we'll be running at the worst case. And that's looks something like that. That looks something like that. Except we've got to wait for these to go away. Boom! It did not like that. <laughs> what happened? Cannot be property X of undefined. Oh, no. That's kind of weird. What happened? Let's do this as well. Boom! Did it again. Yeah, not going to bother digging into that. So let's uncomment those, comment that back out, set that to go. Come back over here, set this to 5. Yeah, hmm. Okay, uh, I think that about wraps up what I was trying to do. I just wanted to play with this, do a proof of concept. I did, and it looked okay to me. It's not exactly what I was going for, but it was only two hours of work as well. So let's put that back in divided by 2. Maybe even put the uh, the plot back in. Cool. All right, one more time. Anybody have any questions? I'll give you one minute <laughs> to ask any questions, and then I'm going to hang it up. What do you think that is? Another 25% over. Five. That's pretty close. Eight. Ah, it's right on the money. Almost. A little shy still. How about this just go? Cool. Alright, well, everybody that came out, uh, thanks so much for taking a look. Uh, those of you that were with me from the beginning, thanks for uh, spending the time. I hope you learned something. Uh, you can give me, uh, shoot me a message if you have any questions or want to talk or anything. Uh, what is this you're asking? What is that thing? Uh, that is my uh, uh, deer antlers that I 3D printed. Alright, thanks guys. Let's see how to stop this.